Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and I'm on the WW or the Weight Watchers Blue Plan. Happy Wednesday, it is what I eat in a day. I am back from my trip, I am back to filming and I have a super fun day plan for us today. We're decorating for Halloween. I have some really good food, some exciting new fall things are in the air. I can't wait to share today with you. So if you're excited for another what I eat in a day, give this video a big huge thumbs up and if you're new or you haven't yet subscribed I'd love to have you here hit the subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell right next to it so you never miss a single video check out the description box down below for my two recipe ebooks I have breakfast I have lunch both contain 15 recipes with all WW plan points and calories included. They're only $15, so definitely get your hands on those. And once we are done with all four eBooks, you will have 60 recipes on hand to stay on track, to eat healthy, and to reach your weight loss goals. So definitely check that out down in the description box. You'll also find nutrition coaching where I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching as well as personalized to you macros and calories. Highly recommend. Links, discounts to everything I shared with you today as well as all of my favorite things. And of course my Facebook group. We'd love to have you join us over there as well. So let's jump into this what I eat in a day to lose weight on WW. this morning. I'm so excited for this. I have two over hard eggs for zero points. I have papaya sprinkled with some lime juice. I have two of the Western Bagel Alternative Pumpkin Baglets. These are a limited edition release from Western Bagel. They come out with these every year and they are so incredibly delicious. They are only one point per mini bagel. You can have two bagels for three points, so that's what I did today. They are so good. If you love pumpkin bagels, but you don't want to spend seven, eight, nine points, these are a great alternative. They have great pumpkin flavor. They taste just like a regular bagel, but they are far less points in calories. They're actually 60 calories per bagel. So I will link Western Bagel down below with 10% off for you if you're interested in picking up the pumpkin bagels or any of the alternative bagels. Make sure whatever ones you choose say alternative because those are the ones that are lower point in calories. And then I have one tablespoon of the pumpkin cream cheese spread from Trader Joe's. You guys know my obsession with this cream cheese. I went ahead and just spread that over the four little mini pumpkin bagels. So my breakfast is three points for the bagels, two points for the cream cheese, zero for the egg, zero for the papaya. So my breakfast is five points. All of this for five points. Good morning, guys. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to another What I Eat in a Day. As you saw, I already had coffee and breakfast. I'm working on my first big glass of water. I just returned from my trip to San Diego 
on Sunday. So I have been playing catch up ever since then. It is Monday that I'm filming this video, so I'm still in the midst of playing catch up. But I wanted to get a what I eat in a day out for you guys since I missed a grocery haul and I also missed a meal prep because I was gone on my trip. My trip was fantastic. I posted some pictures over in my Facebook group. So make sure you're in my Facebook group for the most up to date photos and information. And then I also posted quite regularly on my Instagram. I'll put both my Facebook and Instagram here on the screen so that you can follow me there. But we had such a fantastic trip. I'll go ahead and insert some pictures for you guys. But when I flew in on Wednesday, we just kind of took it easy, went to our hotel, got checked in. And then Thursday morning, we got up super, super early and we took a beautiful hike at a location called Tory Pines. It was right on the ocean. It was a hike. It was a hard hike. It was pretty uphill for at least a mile. I mean, a steady uphill for a mile. And then you can take different twists and turns and paths on the actual mountain. And the view was absolutely gorgeous of the ocean. I had 75 or 80 active minutes and burned over a thousand calories on the hike. So it was a hike, but it was just a great way to start off the vacation so that I didn't feel as guilty relaxing the rest of the vacation. So we took that hike and then we did some shopping. We went to lunch. We had coffee every day at Dunkin' since we don't have a Dunkin' Donuts here. We went to Julian, California for the day, which is a little town, like a little country town. We had lunch there and we did a little. Rachel and I had pedicures, which was really nice just to have a little bit of self-care and self-love. We watched shows. I snuggled on the couch at her house. She has a roommate and I snuggled with her two dogs so that I had a little bit of doggy love while I was on vacation. It was just a really, really good time and a much needed getaway. The weather was beautiful. The day we took the hike was the hottest day, of course, but all of the other days were absolutely beautiful on my vacation. It was just, again, really nice to get away. I am, however, happy to be home. I miss the dogs. I missed my bed. I missed my husband. I'm so, so incredibly happy to be home and get back to work. I literally took an entire break on my vacation. I really didn't check my email. I didn't really do much of anything until I returned. I wanted an actual break from work and everything so I just enjoyed my trip and enjoyed my time it was fantastic but now I'm back and I'm back at it and I'm just now able to try out a new activity watch this is the heel be go b3 it's the watch that I have on today I have the yellow and black band but it does come in several different colors of bands this isn't just an activity watch so it's very different from an Apple watch and a Fitbit and it actually has an app in both the Android and iOS store so I downloaded the app in the Apple App Store app App Store uh, for my watch since I have an iPhone, but this watch is pretty amazing. I'm going to wear it all day today so that I can share with you guys at the end of the day my results. It does take some time for all of the functions of this watch to actually work. It doesn't just happen in one day. This is my first day wearing the watch and I'm really excited to take a look at my stats because like I said, this just isn't an activity tracker. This watch tracks so many amazing things. Gobi 3 has automatic calorie intake tracking. So it actually tracks your calories for you. And it is 95% accurate, which I thought was really, really interesting. You you guys know I use the Lose It app, but since I have this watch now, I'm going to try tracking my calories on the watch and then compare it to the actual calories I'm intaking in Lose It to see how accurate it really is. But it's known to be really, really accurate. So when you eat, food travels to your stomach to be broken down and digested. 10 to 15 minutes later, your body starts converting the carbohydrates in your food to glucose. And then this process continues for four to six hours, really just depending on your body. As glucose levels rise, your cells absorb it and release water. Gobi uses a bioelectrical impedance sensor to measure the fluid in and out of your body cells continuously around the clock. Fat and protein in your food influence the rate of glucose at absorption, leading to different shapes and durations of the glucose curve measured by the Gobi. The built-in Helby Flow technology uses an advanced algorithm to analyze impedance data and calculate calorie intake based on those glucose curves, giving you a complete picture of your nutritional intake over time. So basically, this is a calorie tracker and a fitness watch in one. Plus, it does a couple other really cool functions, but I really like that when you eat or drink something, that 
food is consumed and moves its way through your natural digestive process where the enzymes break it down. The duration of this process depends on what you eat and of course the speed of your metabolism. When the glucose concentration rises, the cells absor absorb it with water. And then the watch actually gives you the calories of that food that you consumed and the macros of that food that you consume based on how it digested and how long it took to digest in your body. By the way, I have a little buddy. <gasps> Say hi to everyone. It can take up to six hours for your body to fully digest your food and deliver those results to the watch. But I think that is really cool. And if it's accurate, it takes one less step out of the equation. You don't have to track your food in a separate app. It simply does it by wearing the watch. It also does your body hydration monitoring. It's going to monitor how much water you've consumed and whether or not you need to consume some additional water to reach your body's hydration levels. First, put your Gobi on. It's immediately going to start collecting data and analyzing your unique hydration level, what is normal to your body. That learning process can take two days up to two weeks of consistent wearable use. So like I said, it's not going to be accurate right off the bat, but if you consistently wear the watch, it's going to track your hydration levels and what is normal for you. In order for this hydration level to be completely accurate, you have to wear your watch constantly in accordance with the user manual, taking it off basically to charge it only. Ensure constant contact with the device sensors with your skin by adjusting the strap and make sure you clean the device in accordance with the care manual. And then after bathing, showering, washing your hands, swimming or sweating, it's best to wipe dry the sensors on the bottom of the device so that your skin can come in better contact with the actual device for the Gobi's accurate reading. Once the Gobi is back on your wrist, it can take 30 minutes to two hours to calculate your hydration level. You have to make sure again that you have consistent contact on your wrist in order for it to accurately measure your hydration. It will also notify you when you need to drink some more water. So this is a great tool if you struggle to get in your water, it will automatically notify you that it's time to hydrate. And lastly, it monitors your stress levels. It helps you relax, it tracks your stress. That's a very cool feature of this watch that's very different from other watches on the market. It's going to tell you if your stress if your stress levels are normal, if they're risen, and there's some ways to combat that as well. So it's going to analyze your pulse data for the last hour. And then through the complex analysis of your sleep quality data, so make sure you're wearing your watch to sleep as well, as well as your height, your weight, your sex, and your age, it's going to track your stress level. You'll see an hourly diagram with your stress level for the last 24 hours. It'll be explained on a one to five scale. One is a safe stress level, two is a light stress level, three is an elevated stress level, four is high stress, and five is very high stress. It's going to help you understand your level of stress that you're currently in and helps you basically deal with it. It's going to tell you whether or not you're experiencing stress. It's also, it measures your heart rate with the piezo sensor that gives you your current and daily heart rate. The sleep cycle algorithm analyzes your previous night's sleep quality, and then it syncs those both together to give you your overall stress levels. So in addition to monitoring your energy balance, calories burned, sleep quality, your steps, and your pulse, it's also going to monitor your calorie intake, your hydration, and it's going to monitor your stress level. So I am so excited that all of this happens in this cute watch. It is less than the cost of an Apple watch and it does so many more features. Now I have an Apple watch as well, but I'm going to wear this watch all day today. This may actually be my new go-to watch, but I want to wear this and see what my calculations say just based on today. But I'm very excited about this. This is definitely the type of watch that does everything for you all in one simple watch. It's affordable and I will go ahead and link it down below with a discount code for you guys. You can get different color bands. I really do like the black and the yellow. I think it's kind of fun. There's gray, there's black, there's very, there's very neutral colors if that's more your vibe. But if you've been looking for a fitness tracker that does more than just track steps, calories burn, heart rate, highly recommend. And of course, I'll update you guys at the end of today's video on my stats for today. But I am loving this watch. I'm so excited to have this. And again, it is linked down below with a discount. I'm gonna have a morning snack. I'm having some kombucha, the Brew Doctor Island Mango Kombucha. 
WW counts this as three, I count this as one. And then I taste tested this organic creamy cashew yogurt in my Trader Joe's video that went live on Sunday. If you haven't seen that, I'll go ahead and link it down below, but I'm gonna finish this yogurt. This, I don't know the points on, but of course I'll put them here on the screen and kombucha, and that's going to be my morning snack. So I just pulled out all my Halloween decorations. I'm going to decorate my house for Halloween, but I thought I would just show you guys a few of the fun decorations pieces that I have and then of course I'll show you what my final house decor looks like but I picked up this super cute Halloween sign last year at Hobby Lobby and then at the Dollar Tree I found this really cute Halloween tree and then I picked up some cute little things to decorate the tree with from the Dollar Tree as well they had some really cute decor so I thought that I could decorate the Halloween tree with that we've got all sorts of fun decor pieces here I even have an entire pumpkin carving kit here so hopefully we can carve pumpkins this year my halloween wreath for my door which is one of my favorite pieces and again just lots and lots of cute little decor pieces i'm gonna go ahead and start decorating my house and then i'll show you guys the finished overall vibe so we'll start our halloween home tour outside i put this cute little fright night yard stake out i've had this for several years i don't even know where i got it and on our porch we still have our potted flowers we'll take those down down here shortly but I did go ahead and put up this pumpkin owl little stand he's so cute we always put our pumpkins out in front of him on the door I have this cute little saying that says won't be back out for a bite we have Palmer wondering what's going on we did put out our hello a pumpkin outdoor rug hi buddy and then on our front door I have uh -uh, no 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 stand on our front door, I have our really cool Halloween wreath. I bought this at Walmart a couple years ago. We love it. When you walk in our front door, this is what you see. We have this table in our formal living room and we always decorate it for every season. It's my main place for decoration. So I put up this cute little pumpkin Halloween garland. I have this adorable little trick or treat sign. I think this is from Walmart. And then I have this big metal haunted house i actually got this from an old job they were going to throw it away and i said i'll take it and i put it in my office at that point and then i brought it home when i resigned and then i have this black pumpkin that says boo and on the bottom shelf of the table i put this black kind of cheesecloth type of material with these cute pumpkin lights i bought these on clearance at walgreens five or six years ago i love them and then i did add my cute little glittery pumpkin which i also bought on clearance at walmart i have this cute sign that says home sweet haunted home and then i have this cute little wooden haunted house that i picked up at the dollar tree a couple years ago currently happening sorry guys We'll be interrupted for our little Halloween home tour by these two. But that is what the table looks like in the formal living room. I do keep my main living room pretty, pretty basic. I did put up that Halloween tree from the Dollar Tree. It turned out really, really cute with all those cute little decorations. And then I have this little green ghost that says boo and lights up. That's from the Dollar Tree a couple years ago. And then I don't know where I got this pumpkin bowl. You could use this for a kitchen sponge on your counter or for candy. And it's just super cute on our little end table in our living room. And in our kitchen on our dining room table with my salt and pepper, I do have this cute little black mat with orange glittery strands. This goes on my table every year. These two little cute pumpkins are from the Dollar Tree. And then this light up haunted lantern is from Costco quite a few years ago. There's different patterns on each side of it it's really really cute and I feel like I paid like ten dollars for it so we always throw that in the middle of our dining room table I have this pumpkin that has the hanging welcome and I just put that up here on my French doors you can't see it very well because of the light but it's super cute very simple on my countertops I have this cute little Halloween happy Halloween wooden sign I always have a Halloween soap from Bath and Body Works you saw me haul this cute little skull with an air plant in it well, actually, it's not an air plant. It's a succulent from Trader Joe's. I bought this more booze please sign last Halloween. It's so cute and it just sits perfect in my window. I have this little pumpkin here. I can't, you probably can't see, but it does light up and change colors on the inside. And then I have this cute little black and white with bats trick or treat sign on my far counter. I always put my cute little orange sand in the center of my island with a fall candle burning. And last but not least, over at my coffee station, I have this cute little 
trick or treat sign. So that's an overview of my kitchen. We don't do a lot. I just like to throw up a few Halloween touches. So now let's go ahead and go into my office. So I did add a few Halloween touches to my backdrop for my videos. I have this really cute three book set from Hobby Lobby. I bought that on clearance a couple of years ago. It's so cute. And then I have this light up ghost. I think that's from the dollar spot at Target. I have this cute little candy dish. I don't even know where that came from. And this little beware sign, I believe also came from the dollar spot at Target a couple years ago. And then on this bookcase, I have this cute little cat bowl. That is from Hobby Lobby last year. And then down here, I put this little ghost and a pumpkin. I don't know where I got either of these. I think they both might've been from Hobby Lobby. But that's all I did in my office, just those two little things for the backdrop of my videos. We always have to be in the spirit. Funny how the story goes, little hope but bigger dreams. Uh, they try to bring a sucker down, singing louder than the crowd. with a lap and cow cheese and some mustard. We have no groceries since I just got back from my trip. I don't even have any lettuce or anything to put on my wrap. So today's what I eat in a day is going to be shopping my fridge and my pantry. So I have my wrap and then I do have one of the Good Culture Cottage Cheese Cups from Costco. I love these, it's such a great way to get in protein. I have another cup of water and these are the chicken nuggets that I use today. These are the Earth's Best kids chicken nuggets they're really good they have a pretty good ingredients and it's all natural chicken no added filler so it's really really good it is a four points for the chicken one point for the wrap and one point for the cheese so my wrap itself is six points and then it's three points for my cottage cheese zero for my water so my lunch is going to be nine points my Imperfect Foods order just got here, so I thought I'd share it with you guys. It's been a while since I shared Imperfect Foods. I do still get my order every two weeks. This time I ended up placing a little bit smaller order, but I did pick up some really fun fall food finds. So let's dig into my order. So the first thing is this Lesser Evil brand. This is their pumpkin spice popcorn. They This brand has really, really good ingredients and you guys know my obsession with pumpkin spice. So I definitely had to pick this up. I also ordered another one of the Imperfect Foods seasonings. Their prices are really good. So I picked up a garlic powder because I'm completely out. I've been wanting to try this Hustle brand. This is their matcha energy. I shared this brand on my nutrition channel in healthy energy drink video get away from the unhealthy energy drinks and move to healthy and this was one of the brands and I saw it in imperfect foods and I had to get it so it's five calories it would be zero points and I can't wait to try it I also ordered some limes for my water and some organic pears there's a few more in the box so a couple of avocados because we are completely out and a couple of heads of gar a couple cloves of garlic for some recipes I also couldn't pass up these crispy pumpkin spice chocolate chip cookies these look so delicious so I had to get those tis the season or can melt is put in a nice insulated bag and there's a big ice pack in the bottom as well and then i picked up two of troy's favorite yogurt covered pretzels with sprinkles he just loves these ones from imperfect boots this is a new 
flavor of Olipop that I haven't tried. This is the orange squeeze. This is a sparkling tonic, so it does have 45 calories. Really, really good though. It has some good probiotics and prebiotics, and again, I wanted to try this flavor. And that is everything. So a pretty small Imperfect Foods order. Just picked up a few staples. I'm going to be doing my massive grocery shopping this week, so I didn't want to go too crazy with the produce. I'll pick that up at Costco, but I'm excited for the pumpkin spice things, the energy drink, the Olipop, and of course, Troy will be excited to have his yogurt covered pretzels back in his life. So I will go ahead and link Imperfect Foods down below. I do have $20 worth of free groceries, no minimum order. So take your groceries and run. I'll make sure that Imperfect Foods is linked down below if you want to help prevent food waste. So here's my afternoon snack. Feeling a little bit run down from my trip. So I've been taking it easy and sipping on quite a bit of hot tea today. So I did go ahead and make myself up another cup of the Trader Joe's organic peppermint tea. It always makes me feel better in my cute little Halloween mug. I bought this at TJ Maxx a couple years ago. And for a snack, I'm keeping it simple. I have one Honeycrisp apple and then I melted down and drizzled over the top two tablespoons of the Wild Friends chocolate and pumpkin spice peanut butter. I bought this on the Wild Friends website, but you can find it at Walmart as well. So it is zero for the apple, six points for the peanut butter, zero for my hot tea. So this is my afternoon snack. For dinner tonight, we are going to make homemade chicken parmesan. I have been craving chicken parm, so this is going to be perfect for tonight's dinner. So let me show you what's in the recipe as well as what we're pairing with the chicken parm. You're going to need some light mozzarella cheese, chicken breast, there's two of us so I have two chicken breasts. You'll need eggs, Parmesan cheese, salt and pepper, oil, panko breadcrumbs, all-purpose flour, and marinara of your choice. My recommendation would be a zero-point marinara. I count this one as zero points. And then to pair with our chicken parm, I'm going to pop our very favorite mini French baguettes into the oven. We love these. They're basically like a breadstick. They're three points a piece and they are so, so good. So we're going to have that. And then I do have some frozen peas that we need to use up. So I'm gonna warm those up in the microwave as well. You're going to wanna pound your chicken breasts pretty thin. So mine are in a Ziploc bag here. I'm going to trim the fat and then I'm using the bottom of a glass. If you have a meat tenderizer, that would work a lot better. We're going to crack two eggs into a shallow bowl and then mix those together really well. Into another shallow bowl, I am mixing one cup of panko breadcrumbs and half of a cup of Parmesan cheese. And then we're gonna mix that together as well so the cheese and the breadcrumbs are incorporated. A tablespoon of flour here and I'm just going to sprinkle that on top of the chicken breast. We'll do the same with the other side. And then I'm just going to take my hand and pat that flour on to each of side of the chicken breast. So I'm going to take one of the flour coated breasts of chicken. I'm going to make sure that I shake off any excess flour. That's going to go into the egg mixture. Make sure the entire chicken breast gets coated shake off any extra, and then put that into the panko parmesan cheese. Now we wanna make sure the entire breast of chicken gets completely coated. And then we're putting the piece of chicken on a plate here and just setting it aside. We're going to let it rest for about 15 minutes and then repeat with the other chicken breast. I added one tablespoon of oil to a skillet. I have it over medium high heat. I'm going to add the two breasts of chicken to the hot skillet. And then we're going to let these cook for just a couple of minutes on each side. The chicken does not have to be cooked all the way through. It will continue cooking in the oven. We basically just want it to get brown. See how the chicken is nice and brown? That's exactly what we want. It is just about done, and then we're going to assemble the chicken parm into the baking dish. So into the bottom of a small baking dish, the recipe calls for a nine by 13, but my chicken is big enough yet small enough to fit into a smaller baking dish. So I did put about a quarter of a cup of marinara on the bottom of the dish just to coat it. Now we're going to add the browned chicken breast. Going to drizzle over the rest of the marinara sauce right on top of the chicken. It's about three quarters of a cup total of marinara. And then I'm going to take half of a cup of mozzarella cheese and I'm going to put that right over the top. And then I'm going to put a quarter of a cup 
over the two chicken breasts of Parmesan cheese. Also top it with fresh basil, but I don't have any fresh basil. Unfortunately, it's one of my favorite things, but you know, I need to go grocery shopping from my trip. So I am going to sprinkle on just a little bit of dried basil. Now this is going into a 450 degree oven for 15 to 20 minutes or until the chicken is cooked all the way through. I'm gonna pop this in the oven and put together the breadsticks. So for the mini baguettes or the breadsticks, they literally look just like a breadstick. I like to lay them out on the quarter sheet pan. I like to spray them with a little bit of butter spray. That just helps the garlic salt and the Parmesan cheese stick to them. And I'm going to sprinkle over some garlic salt. And then I like to put just a tiny bit of Parmesan cheese. I don't count it. It's literally about a teaspoon on top of each of the breadsticks. And then I'll put these in the oven when the chicken is about 15 minutes into its 20 minute cooking. It only takes five to 10 minutes for these to crisp up in the oven. I just took out the chicken parm. This looks incredible. And then I took out the breadsticks as well. The peas are in the microwave. They are just about done. I'm going to plate this up and I'll be back to share points and calories. So here is my dinner for tonight. The chicken parm actually makes four servings. So I went ahead and cut the chicken in half. I have some peas and then one of the breadsticks. So the chicken parm itself is seven points and my breadstick is three points. So my dinner is a total of 10 points. So here's my dessert for tonight. I'm gonna have one of the Trader Joe's pumpkin ginger hold the cone. These are so good. They're wrapped in like a white chocolate over pumpkin ice cream. Super, super good. So that is my dessert. I didn't know love could ever feel like this. I didn't know body shivers from a kiss. Now I know. Thank you for joining me on another What I Eat in a Day on WW. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me today, seeing all of my food. That dinner was absolutely incredible. We had such a great day. My house is ready for Halloween. I couldn't be happier. Such a fantastic day. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big, huge thumbs up. And tonight's dinner recipe is on my website. I'll make sure that's linked down in the description box along with my two recipe eBooks, nutrition coaching, links, discounts to everything I shared with you today as well as all of my other favorite things and of course my Facebook group. So definitely check out that description box and come join us over on Facebook. We'd love to have you. Thank you again so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new or you haven't subscribed, do that before you go. We'd love to have you here on YouTube in this amazing community as well. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.